Deep below the ocean surface lies a hidden world filled with valuable minerals like copper, cobalt, and nickel, essential for making electric cars, wind turbines, and smartphones. But how do we actually mine these resources from depths up to six kilometers below sea level? In this video, we'll walk you through the five phases for mining deep in the ocean. Just quickly, before we get into the five phases, let me comment on the environmental and business concerns. Even though we don't talk about these concerns in this video, doesn't mean that there's not a lot of challenges that need to be addressed. I have a whole video that walks through the business and environmental considerations for deep sea mining. Just click up top of this video or look in the show notes to get the link for that other video. Now, back to how companies do deep sea mining. The first step is prospecting. First, we need to find out where the minerals are. Scientists use sonar to map the seafloor, and then they send underwater robots to capture images and samples. They're looking for three types of deposits, potato-sized polymetallic nodules lying loose on the seabed, or metal-rich crusts on the underwater mountains, um, or polymetallic sulfides near hydrothermal vents. Now, how do they do that? They have ships that do sonar surveys, including multi-beam sonar and side-scan sonar. These are used to map the seabed's geological features. Then they have geophysical tools like electromagnetic systems that send signals into the seafloor and then they measure how much it conducts them. This way they can detect mineral rich zones on the seafloor. The autonomous and remotely operated vehicles then can go down to perform detailed imaging and sampling in the areas that are most interesting. This way they can confirm the presence of minerals before they do a lot of other things. Now the outcome of this prospecting step is a list of target areas for further exploration. They use this information to figure out where to go next. That takes us to the second phase, which is exploration. This step is all about figuring out how much mineral is there and how mining might affect the marine life. Robots drill into the seabed and then collect samples while scientists study the surrounding ecosystem to understand what lives there and how it might be impacted. What tools do they use for this? They have remote operated vehicles equipped with drills that extract ore samples for analysis. They have geological mapping tools to estimate resource size and distribution. And they have high resolution imaging technologies like deep toed photography, which is cameras that they drag along behind ships that go down deep. They have environmental baseline studies that come out of these scientific studies that document the existing ecosystems and assess the potential impacts. The overall outcome of this exploration step is a detailed resource assessment, including environmental impact evaluations and feasibility studies for the actual mining operations. This gets us to phase three. Once everything's ready, it's time to set up the collection equipment. A big ship called the production support vessel lowers a robotic collector down to the sea floor. These machines are like tractors that live underwater. They either scoop up loose nodules or they use drills to break apart harder deposits like sulfides or the crust that we talked about earlier. Now, what do they use to do this? How, what methods? The subsea collectors are lowered to the seabed using a launch and recovery system on a production support vessel like we talked about earlier. These collectors use technologies like hydraulic suction systems or robotic arms or mechanical dredges to gather up nodules or break apart SMS deposits. And all of this equipment is powered and controlled via an and via a cable that goes to the support vehicle at the top. This does a couple of different things. It powers the vehicles at the bottom, but it also allows the people at the top to control and monitor in real time what is going on. The outcome of this whole setup phase is to get the infrastructure in place for efficient ore collection with minimal disruption to the surrounding ecosystems. This takes us to phase four, which is the vertical transport of the ore to the surface. This admittedly is one of the most challenging parts of the whole operation, getting the ore from the seafloor to the surface. They use hydraulic pumps for the most part to push a slurry of minerals and water through the pipes that stretch over four kilometers long. This process takes a lot of energy because of how deep these deposits are. Once the slurry gets to the top on board the ship, machines separate the minerals from the water and the sediment. And then the leftover sediment is pumped back into the ocean. Unfortunately, this can create some plumes and disturb the marine life. Just one of the things that needs to be thought through when they figure out what the environmental assessment is. Finally, we get to phase five, and that's the surface processing and refinement that happens on land. This is actually very similar to any other mining operation. The collected minerals are shipped to a processing facility. Refineries extract metals like cobalt and nickel that are used in batteries and electronics and renewable energy systems. 
What's interesting is the minerals from just one square kilometer of seabed could supply enough material for millions of batteries or solar panels. The ore is actually very dense in the minerals that it provides. So there you have it, the five phases to mining ore deep in the ocean. From prospecting and exploration to bringing the minerals to the land, this process combines cutting edge technology in the face of enormous challenges. But here's what I want to know. Do you think deep sea mining is worth all these risks? Or should we focus on other ways to get these minerals? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be happy to connect with you on YouTube or LinkedIn. And for more information on the sources for this video and how to connect with me in real life, check out the show notes below. Take care.